that's fine. Okay, it's it's recording, so we can just like he can always trim it off, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, we ready? Yep. We'll give him a five second countdown. Okay. Four, three. Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to a special edition uh, update here from the Medina United Methodist Church. Uh, with me today is Amanda Sherritt. Amanda is our Financial Peace University coordinator uh, here at the church. And we know one of the stressors right now is money. Uh, so we want to take some time and offer 10 financial words of wisdom or a 10 financial tips for COVID-19 whatever you want to call it. We just want to offer some help and some suggestions uh, to share with the group today. Um, again, one of the stressors, probably the biggest stressors for people right now is money. So, so Amanda, where would you say we need to begin as we talk about money today? Yeah, good, good question. I think um, kind of the first place I would start is control what you can control, right? There's so much that's happening right now that is beyond our control. And so I think that um, starting there is, is a good place. Um, but one thing that, you know, multiple things that we can control is our outlook on what's happening right now, uh, you know, our mindset and our faith. We can stay connected to faith, of course. Um, and we, can con we can't control if we lose our jobs, right? That, that's, that's one thing that's out of our control. But another thing that we can control is our money and how we're handling our money right now, and which is always important, but I think especially important during a time like this. Amen to that. So if there are things we can control, what's the best way to control our finances and, and, and how we operate within those realms? Yeah, I always say that the best way to control your money, and most people don't like it, it they consider it a bad word, is to do a budget. Um, or you can call it a cash flow plan or whatever you want to say that that uh, makes you feel better about it. But that's, again, something that's always important. But right now, it's especially important. And it's not too late. So if you are already in the middle of having financial hardships with everything that's going on, I would say it is, it's still not too late to start a budget and start looking through um, everything that you have as far as expenses. And the way that we always recommend to do a budget is to list your income at the top and then list all of your expenses and your income minus all of your expenses. And expenses include things like giving and saving and all of that, anything that you're gonna do with money. So income minus all of those things should equal zero. And the reason for that is you're telling every dollar where it should go before you even have a chance for it to you know, slip out of your hands. Um, so that I think is really important right now. I agree wholeheartedly with that. But I also know that part of a budget and part of Financial Peace University is debt reduction. So if we're in that plan and we're trying to deal with debt, how does that all balance out uh, in these times in which we're living right now? Yeah, good question. I think there's like a little bit of kind of two answers maybe with this. And so um, one is if you are in a career or a job that you know is going to be stable um, and you, you're pretty confident you're not gonna lose your job throughout all of this. So a teacher, a healthcare worker, those kinds of things, um, you can kind of continue on as you were, paying off your debt and those kinds of things. But if you are in a job that it, at all you are not sure what is happening, which is a lot of people right now that you don't know what is gonna happen with your job right now, um, I would say press pause on the debt snowball, which is what we talk about in Financial Peace University of how to pay off the debt. I would say press pause. And so you're not stopping. You're still, you're going to pay minimum payments on all of your debts, but you're just going to say, okay, all of that extra money that I was sending to debt, I'm now going to put over here in a savings account because I need a little bit of an extra cushion between me and life right now. And so if I need it, it's there. If I don't need it and I have my job and we get through this and everything's fine, then you just press play and all of that money goes on debt and hopefully you didn't really lose any progress, right? Um, but, but right now it's not a bad idea to press pause if, if you think that there's a possibility for you to lose your income or reduce your income. All right, if you're looking at your budget um, and you've really got to make some choices on things, where are the priorities, where do you begin? Yeah, um, Dave Ramsey calls this the four walls. Like these are the four things that are the most important in your budget. And that is food, 
shelter, utilities, and transportation. So food, of course, you've got to get food on the table for your family. Shelter would be your rent or your mortgage. Uh, utilities, of course, are everything for inside your house. And then transportation, because you do need to be able to get back and forth to your job, assuming that you are still going outside of the house to, to work. And so those are the things that it's like, if you have a limited income right now, or you, something's happening financially, you're looking at your budget and going, I want to make sure I'm covering those four things before I do anything else with money. All right. If you've got the four walls covered um, and you know that you've got to make some cuts, where do you begin to shave things out of that budget a little bit or a whole Any, lot? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything that is not essential. Um, and so that would be any like subscriptions that you have just had monthly and you're not using, maybe you haven't been using them for a while, it's time to cut them. Um, anything that is extra and above and beyond. And I always like to remind people that this is not forever, right? This is to get you through this storm. So if you have to cut the cable, if you have to cut the Netflix, like I know that's not fun, but you have to just do what you have to do to get you through the storm right now. Um, and I heard this and I thought this was a really good piece of advice was like, when you're looking at your budget like this, pretend like you're looking at your friend's budget because it's so much harder. We're so like, we hold tight to our stuff, right? We don't really want to uh, let go of our things, but when it's somebody else's, we're more likely to cut it. And so, uh, you know, I think that's a good idea is like when you're looking at your budget and you're like, oh, I just can't cut that. Well, would you be able to cut it if it was somebody else's and, and look at it through that lens? Some would say now you're meddling, but I, uh, but I see where you're coming from. I like that advice. I think that's pretty yeah. solid. Well, as we continue in these times, um, you know, a lot of us have made, some of us have made a lot of financial mistakes in the past, um, and it takes years to recover from those. What would you say would be the biggest mistakes that we could make right now? Yeah, I think um, going into debt would probably be the number one biggest mistake right now. And I know that it can be easy to want to fall onto credit cards or other things. Um, and I know it can feel like that's the only option you have. But I would say that during something like this where you're having financial hardship, that's just a way to um, ensure that the financial hardship continues past all of this is going into debt and making a decision like that. And just I think we all know that making decisions out of fear can oftentimes lead us to bad decisions like that. So I just say, take a step back and see, you know, before you do something like that, um, think about what all your options are and just really, tr really, really try not to go into debt or do other bad decisions. Um, people are fearful and wanting to maybe uh, cash out their investments or do those kinds of things. And I would just say, talk to somebody, talk to an advisor, make sure you're, you're making a smart decision and not a decision out of fear. But every other commercial right now is saying you can get this car for 0% interest for 84 months. Yes, I know. I know. They're trying to keep their business going in this storm. And we can't blame them for that, right? They, they're, they're seeing the hit on their business. Um, but what we have to do is say our job and our priority is our family, right? We need to take care of our household. And so I think for us, making a decision and making a big purchase right now is just not advisable. Um, and so even if you have income coming in, uh, you just don't know what's gonna happen right now. And so I think it's a good idea to, even if you do say you think you have the money, maybe just, again, press pause, put that in a savings account. And then when this is all over, you know, you can make that decision. Awesome, awesome. Well, Amanda, you know as well as I do that so many have been laid off. So many have had reduced hours. Some have been furloughed. Uh, I just heard the other day uh, some salaried folks are operating under half salary now. So what do you do when, uh, when those things happen? Yeah, I think there's kind of two different answers there. One would be um, if you have lost your job, you know, I, I think applying for unemployment, you should really do that as soon as possible. They've been, I've been watching those, you know, the press conferences every day, and they talk about that just about every day that they took away the waiting period, and so people are seeing their checks a lot faster, and so I think that that's really good to make sure you're applying for your uh, unemployment if you have lost your job, and then the other side of that is um, there are places that are hiring, um, you know, Amazon is hiring right now, Shift is hiring right now, because all of these, like, 
grocery delivery or restaurant delivery places, those, those businesses are doing well. Grocery stores are doing well, and most of them are hiring right now. So um, it may not be a job that you want to do, or maybe it's not a job anywhere near to your career choice, but it's something that would bring income in uh, during this time. And then, of course, you can reevaluate once, once the storm has passed. Very good. Very good. Amanda, the federal government has said the check is in the mail. And that makes me want to do my happy dance. <laughs> but we've got to be careful there, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, yeah, I think any time that we get quote unquote extra money, um, it can often disappear, right? I'm, I'm sure, I know it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to most people that if you don't have a plan for it, it can disappear. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I think before that check even arrives, uh, you kind of think through what should I do with that money? If you're married, it's important for you guys to be on the same page and kind of have that conversation together. Um, and again, if you are have not really been impacted financially throughout all this, it's not over yet. And so I'm not trying to be like negative or anything, but we just don't know what's going to happen. And so um, it's never a bad idea, again, to have that cushion between you and life. And so I would say just if nothing else, throw it in your savings account and, and have it there. And it's an emergency fund if and when you need it. And then if not, when you come out of this storm, then you can decide what, what to do with it. So you're saying we need to uh, put off maybe something fun or exciting and, and just take care of the priorities. Yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely say that that's a good idea. You know, again, I always say too that honestly, like if you are financially stable, um, and you're, again, you know that your income is going to be there throughout all of this because you're in one of those careers that are, are you know, busy right now, um, then maybe you do something that kind of gives back. So maybe you, you are donating that money or helping those that are helping others right now, the local church, right, the other organizations, um, you're supporting your small businesses, you could do something like that. And I think that that's never a bad idea. Giving is never a bad idea when it comes to money. Um, I think that that, of course, is always a great idea. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't have a lot of extra money in their hands right now, but they've got a lot of extra time right now. How can we use the extra time to, to get a handle on our finances? Yeah, I think um, you could always use this time for a lot of things. I think we're all going to learn a lot throughout all of this, right? Um, but I think that one of the things, because we're talking through the lens of money here, is to learn new ways or, or maybe better ways to manage your money. So, of course, you know, and, and the, the church, we're, we're fans of Financial Peace University, and it's a great way to learn how to handle money God's way. Um, and so this is an awesome time to do that. And Dave Ramsey's team is offering it free for 14 days. So They've never done that before, but uh, this is a, you know, a time where a lot of people need it that maybe didn't think they needed it in the past. And so um, I think it's a really good time to do that. And throughout that, you know that we lead the, church, the, the FPU class there at the church. And uh, so we have decided to lead another class virtually um, through Zoom, kind of like we're meeting here today. And um, so that's going to start Tuesday, April 14th at six o'clock. And so we'll just jump on a call like this and kind of have class discussion like that, because we know that this is a time where people um, could use that help and hope around their money. So people could do financial peace from their living room or their basement or their backyard if the sun is shining. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, so they're going to watch the video first because they get an online portal so they can watch the video on the online portal. And then we'll jump on the call just to have the discussion questions and kind of talk through anything that they might uh, have questions about after the video. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, any other thoughts you want to share with the group today? Um, I think, you know, kind of along those lines is um, giving yourself grace if you are not in the financial position that you would have hoped that you would have been throughout all of this. Uh, it's never helpful to beat yourself up, right? Um, but again, just using this time to think through what would have made this a little less stressful, um, financially speaking? Of course, it, this is stressful in many ways, but financially speaking, what would have made this situation a little less stressful for you and your family? And kind of using that as motivation to uh, be in a better place financially coming out of it. So if you are like, man, an emergency fund would have really helped me or not having debt or you know, having a chunk of money that I can give to those in need or 
be able to provide to my church that's providing to the community. Um, if I would have had that, that would have been really helpful. And use this time as motivation to uh, do that when, when we kind of get out of this. So you're talking as if there could be other financial, you know, struggles in life down the road. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, there could be. I mean, uh, this is something that we hope never happens again. But of course, uh, people get laid off, businesses close. Uh, we do have recession. Stuff like this does happen and could happen in the future. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's it's a good idea to kind of use this as motivation to maybe clean up our finances a little bit. And even if it doesn't happen on a worldwide scale or even a national scale, you know, it can happen to anybody anytime uh, yeah. through accident, illness, or, or tragedy, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, you're 100% correct. It can, it, yeah, none of us are immune to it, right? Something could happen at any point, so. Scripture reminds us that it rains on both the just and the unjust, uh, and sometimes life just happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, Amanda, I want to thank you for being with us today and thank you for your wisdom uh, and your willingness to be here and thank you for your, uh, your willingness to continue to lead our Financial Peace University classes. To those listening, if you... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I just said you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, all right. Uh, for those of you watching, if you're watching on Facebook, you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them there at the bottom. Uh, or if you want to shoot an email to the church, uh, we'll, we'll answer any questions uh, that you might have to the best of our ability. Uh, if there's enough questions, uh, you know, we can do a repeat of this next week and address some of those other issues that you might have. Uh, so let us know. If you need help, we're, we're here for you. And uh, we're just in this thing together. Amanda, thank you. God bless you. And, and uh, God bless all those that are watching. We'll Thank see you, you soon. God bless you, you too. Welcome.